we'll look into the next topic which is about punches if you need to make any marking on the metal piece how are you going to do that if you need to write something how you go, how are you going to do that so that is done by the use of punch if you need to drill a hole so the drill bit won't stick in that place and will try to wobble around or move out of the place for the for the a drill bit to remain concentrated at that particular point so that it doesn't wobble it doesn't move we and if we need to fix the drill bit to one particular point in that case initially i need to provide some or do some indentation so that it stays in that position and does not slip from that position and that is being done by the use of punches if you need to after you are done with riveting and all and then let's say the riveting is not correct or maybe you need to remove some rivet and then you need to reinstall again uh, so in order to remove a damaged rivet again we need to use punches so punches have got different application so because for punches have got different application so quite natural there is not a single type of punch there are different types of punches okay so unlike a hammer in case of punch as you can see in the diagram or diagram not given so the end of the punch the area is very less with very less area so how it looks like a general construction something like this with the area being very small with the area being small that means whenever you are applying some force using a hammer and the pressure because we know pressure is equal to force per unit area with the area getting reduced so that means the pressure is becoming very high so in order to have very high pressure we use punches that means the pressure is concentrated in one particular area and it is not spreading okay now whenever you are hammering it and with use gradually this portion tend to get slightly out of shape because every time you are hammering it hammering it pounding it so quite natural that with time over time this will get out of shape and if that gets out of shape so the shape would become something like a mushroom you know the shape of the mushroom so that is known as mushroom head so with time as you will be using the punch every day or with time the head of the punch will tend to get distorted and it will result in shape called mushroom head which is not very helpful the reason is because the metal got deformed so that implies that probably you know you can see some small cracks or something and this could like whenever you are hammering it certain portion of it could fly out break off and fly and could hit you it could also go into your eyes so quite natural this is not a very helpful situation so we need to get rid of this if there are a lot of this uh, this mushroom shape if it is like too much out of shape and deformed in that case we we need to get rid of this mushroom so how we need, how we need to get rid of this mushroom probably you no know, this out of shape we are getting is because of the fact that the metal is being spread out so what we can do is maybe just use the grinder and grind some of this metal which are moving outward in a very random fashion so that again we can bring it back to shape okay 
Any doubt so far? <coughs> so that is what it is written here. To reduce the chance of metal chip flying off and causing injury during punching operation, the deformation should be removed and the shank end returned to its original shape by the use of the bench grinder. So you need to remember this. What would happen if the punch head turned to be a mushroom shape? In that case, can we use it? No. Why we cannot use it? Because it can cause injury. How you are going to sort out this problem? By grinding off those extra bits of metal. Okay? Okay? Grinding means? No, the grinding wheel. Moving at very high speed. So, just take the uh, punch head near to the grinding wheel so that this extra piece of metal which are being spread out can be shaved off. Okay. So, as I mentioned that the punches have got different application. We can use the punch to remove the rivet. We can use punch uh, to, to uh, write something for a drilling mark. So that means we need to have different types of punches for different application. So punches are, we'll be looking into uh, four different types of punches, center punch, pin punch, hollow punch and drip punch. The head, if you try to look from the top, you'll find then the shape of the head in case of center punch, in case of pin punch and in case of hollow punch, the head you will find the shape is hexagonal, six sides. Or if it is round, in that case it will be knurled. Knurling means, you know, sometimes you will find that certain piece of metal is having some crisscross cutting. Have you seen that? So this is done to ensure that we have got a greater grip because of this crisscross cutting we can have better friction. So either if it will be hexagonal and if not hexagonal it will be round and if it is round that it will be null for better gripping. It needs to be tempered because it cannot be too brittle. Isn't it? Because every time I am hammering it, if it is too hard in the end, that means hardness is equivalent to brittleness. So the moment I am pounding it with hammer, it will break off, isn't it? So it cannot be brittle. At the same time, this is used for marking to do some indentation, to drill out rivets. So that means it need to be, it cannot be too soft as well. So we require in between. So in between means tempered. So it must be tempered. It is made using cast steel and some length with some gripping diameter and then the driving end is smaller. Okay. Now we will try to look into individual type of punches. Initially, we will start off with center punch. These are sharp pointed tools used to make the indentation. So, if I need to start a hole, if I need to drill a hole, I don't want the drill bit to wobble around. I don't want the drill bit to slip off. And for that, I require some marking so that the drill bit can stick to that marking. And that indentation is done by the use of center punch. The angle, included angle is between 60 to 90 degree. What angle are you going to have that depends on the hardness of the metal. If you are using some softer metal, in that case we will be using large angle. And if you are using hard metal, in that case we will be using narrow angle.
okay so you need to remember what is the purpose of the center punch so center punch i is basically used to make indentation so that the drill bit does not slip off whenever we need to start the drilling operation so prior to carrying out the drilling we need to do the marking so that the drill bit does not slip off and that is being done by the use of center punch the angle could be variable the angle means this angle no this angle this angle could be variable it could be 90 degree or it could be 60 degree so what angle specifically we are going to take that depends on the hardness of the metal if you are using soft metal in that case the angle will be larger and if you are using hard metal in that case the angle will be narrower or smaller Okay, any doubt so far? So, we must drive with enough force to provide the indentation, but at the same time, it should not be too hard so that the metal can get distorted. So, the force the pressure need to be kept in the optimum level and how we know what is the optimum level so that comes with experience another form of center punch is the prick punch which has a finer point used to make indentation along a drawn line when the line is otherwise difficult to see the indentation may also be used when sawing down to a line as witness point to show that the cutting is accurate what it says so finer point that means the indentation will now be finer if we use prick punch it is a type of a center punch used to make finer indentation where it is used if a normal line if you are drawing a line using a scriber and it is not possible to see in that case to have a more uh, better visual quality so that you can see it properly you can use the prick punch okay it will give you an idea if the cutting that is being done is accurate or not okay so with a scriber if you are not able to see it properly in that case to to have a better visual appearance so that you can see it properly to do this because now we cannot have very uh, you know indentation which is very uh, a deep indentation because that would damage the part we don't want that we want the indentation to be finer shallower but at the same time good enough so that you can see it properly the normal scribing line that you cannot see that must be made more visible by the use of the prick punch always remember because as i mentioned to you that the punch can also be used to drive out rivets so never ever use center punch to drive out rivet okay next is pin punch where is it used so in order to remove pins and rivets to drive out the pins and rivets from the holes we need to use the pin punch the driving end 
of the pin punch is cut flat. That means this portion, let's say this is, it is flat. Okay? Unlike you know, 60 degree or 90 degree, here it is flat. Because it is not being used to provide the indentation, the purpose is to drive out the rivet from the rivet hole or to drive out some pins from the holes. <coughs> and <coughs> the diameter of this end is grounded. Ground means past participle form of grind. to match the size, the diameter of the pin or the ribbon. The spin punch can have parallel driving end, parallel driving end or it can have tapered driving end. This one is parallel, it can have either parallel or capable driving it with this end being flat. This diameter, diameter of the drive end should be matching against the drive, diameter of the rivet that you are driving out. Okay? Any doubt? Next is hollow punches. Hollow punches are used to punch out bolts or studs. Now what exactly bolt and stud? So bolt definitely you all know, correct? You have seen bolts. The bolts will have some head, isn't it? Correct? Now, assume a type of bolt where the head is missing. Some threads here, some threads here. So this becomes a stud. Okay? You will find studs in the you know, you know, car engine. That engine case. This half, this half, the crankcase are joined by the use of studs. So hollow punches are used to punch out bolts or studs in soft, thin sheet metal, such as shimming or gasket material. If we are, or if some studs or bolts are being installed in some thin sheet metal and if we need to remove that we will be using the hollow punches which is difficult to cut with the drills now if because now we are referring to a condition where the nut of uh, sorry where the bolt or the stud is being removed from some sheet metal where the diameter is thin less diameter uh, that sorry the thickness is less and the metal is soft and then whenever you are applying the force with the metal being soft and it is being a sheet metal so there is a possibility that it might not be able to withstand that load so it requires something to back up isn't it so we'll be using some wooden block to back up So to avoid damaging to the cutting end of the hollow punch, we'll be using this wooden block. Next we'll look into the drift punch. So what it can be made of, it can be made, of, made from aluminium alloy, it can be made from steel, it can be made from aluminium. And what is its purpose? It is used to drive bearings, bushes, 
Bushes means plain bearing. Let's say you have got some hole and you want to pass some shaft through this hole. Okay? We have got some hole here and you need to pass some shaft through this hole. Now this shaft, when you are trying to uh, let the shaft go through this hole, it will create some friction between these two surfaces, isn't it? And there will be wear and tear. Now if that is the case, I need to reduce the friction first of all. At the same time, because of wear and tear, this as well as this can get damaged, isn't it? And if that gets damaged, it becomes out of shape because of uh, wear and tear and they become loose. So we need to replace this thing. So replacing this whole thing definitely is not cheap, it is expensive. So what would be the better option? A better option is if I got some bearing, a plain bearing, just a small plain bearing. Okay? something like this okay and install it here so this is bushing done to reduce the friction when a shaft moves through some holes so in order to remove this or in order to remove any normal bearing we'll be using the Drift punch. Okay. Any doubt? So, in order to remove bushes, bearings, or shafts from their respective cages or housings will be using the drip punch always remember that if we are required to drive out the bearing we should always use only steel drip because we have seen that the drip punch can be made of either aluminium copper or steel whenever we need to drive out the bearing in that case always use the steel drift punch why because if we are using soft metal in that case if the drift punch instead of being made of uh, steel made using aluminium or copper with aluminium or copper being soft and then whenever we try to apply force to that punch it can break down and to prevent that will be always using steel okay any doubt so far so that's all about drift so if we try to recall back or do a quick revision of what we have seen so far and what you are required to remember so first of all what is the purpose of the punch how punch is different from hammer hammer is a normal pounding tool where the force that you are applying or the pressure is not concentrated in one particular area but if you want the pressure to be concentrated in one particular area and not spread out we need to use the punch we have got different types of punches depending on their application Certain type of punch are used to provide the indentation. Certain type of punch is used to provide a shallower or fine indentation in order to look at you know the cutting lines. Certain type of punch we are using in case of sheet metal and certain type of punch are used to drive the rivet certain type of punches are used to drive out uh, bearings so the one that is used to drive out bearing they are called 
drip punch what you need to remember very clearly is if we need to remove the bearing we should always use steel drip punch and not the one made of aluminium or copper what is the reason because if we use aluminium or copper they are being soft can get damaged and if that would get damaged or breaks off in that case it can cause injury the head of the punch can get out of shape can get deformed and if that happens that whole thing is known as mushrooming and you need to ensure that mushrooming does not happen and if you notice some visible deformation the mushrooming in that case we need to get rid of it how can we get rid of it by grinding it off why is it essential because if we do not do it in that case it can break down and can cause injury what type of rivet do we need to drive out any type of <coughs> stud or bolt from thin sheet metal we'll be using the hole punch what for if you are using hollow punch we need to apply pressure external pressure using some wooden block in order to prevent any damage to the cutting edge what type of rivet is been uh, sorry what type of punches are being used to remove uh, rivets we use pin punch how pin punch is different from center punch pin punch the end are flat and this punch can have two type of configuration either will be parallel or will be tapered what most essential thing we need to keep in mind we need to keep in mind regarding the size how the size need to be related it should be related in terms of the diameter of the rivet head that you were removing out so both should match and regarding center punch what you need to keep in mind it can have two different type of angles 60 degree or 90 degree whether we go for 60 degree or 90 degree it all depends on the hardness of the metal where you are using the uh, center punch if you, if it is softer metal in that case the angle will be more and if you are using hard metal in that case the angle will be lesser that's all you need to remember <coughs> okay <coughs> next topic is chisel the next topic is chisel so this chisel can be used on metal piece to cut metal it can also be used to cut wood so here we'll be typically looking into the metal cutting chisels another name for it is cold chisel if i need to cut metal piece using chisel so we have got some cutting tool so quite natural we need to apply pressure using hammer isn't it so it is always used along with hammer like similar to the punch ham uh, because punch can only be used with hammer similarly here this also will be used with hammer or along with the hammer okay the manufacturing is done by forging and the length of the stem it is shorter and the shape if you look from the top you will find it is hexagonal it is made using high carbon steel because we are using it to cut metal piece and to cut metal piece to cut something quite natural we require something which is hard 
Anything which is hard can only cut the other one, isn't it? So, always remember, hardness depends on the carbon content. More the carbon content, more will be the hardness. So, we are using high carbon steel to manufacture the cheese. With the cutting edge further hardened, and then we cannot have too hard as well because in that case it will break down, isn't it? So we need to temper it. Okay. Initially we we'll try to harden it up, and then we we'll temper it. So it is hardened and then tempered. To prevent flying particles when hammering, the striking end is not hardened. So let's say you have got this chisel here and I need to remove metal piece or cut metal piece using this chisel and I need to hammer the other end. So this is the cutting end and this is the driving end. Okay? So you are hammering the other end. So if I am hammering the other end, that means all the forces is concentrated in this region, isn't it? So this cannot be hard, right? Because if it is hard, in that case it will break down. Because hardness is related to brittleness. If it is too hard, it will get brittle. And because of the brittleness, if I am applying too much of pressure, it will break down. I want this part to be hard. I want this part not very hard. So the striking end, you are striking this side, so the striking end is not hardened and is comparatively softer. Periodically, the bar that forms at the striking end of the chisel what is bur? B U R R. Any type of metal piece, if you can find, let's say you have got a hole, you drill the hole in a metal piece. It is possible that if you look at the edges of this hole, there could be some small, small metal chips, isn't it? Correct? These are bur. So this basically is metal chips. We get this because you know it is very difficult to finely cut. So whenever you are drilling it, we get bar. So basically these are some metal piece, some metal chips which are extended beyond its normal contour so this is the normal contour so beyond its normal contour if something is extended this is bar. so this extension could be outside as well isn't it right like the mushroom head so the bar that forms at the striking end of the chisel is removed similar to what we did in case of punches by grinding here you can also file so by filing or grinding you can remove this uh, bird in the in the uh, striking head to allow the cutting edge to have long life we can make the chisel using nickel alloy steel that means a, a normal steel which will have nickel as one of the impurity we'll add some nickel in order to get the degree of hardness we desire okay we will be looking into detail in all of this in the material hardware.
how they are classified by their shape by their length by the cross section of the shank and the width of the cut so you need to remember this how they are identified so you have got four different ways of identification or classification of the chisel they are classified in terms of their shape their overall length the cross section of the shank and the width of the cut here we will be looking into four different types of chisel the one that are given in your book flat chisel cross cut chisel diamond point and half round flat chisel cross cut diamond point and half round we will be looking into each of these and their application so initially we will look into the flat chisel so you can see here quite natural the cutting edge is flat as you can see in the diagram so that's how we get the name flat chisel okay so they are used for general chipping work general purpose if we need to remove metal in some normal place we'll be using the flat chisel if i need to cut a sheet metal or cutting any flat surface will be using the uh, flat chisel the cutting edge is not perfectly flat it is slightly convex another name for cross cut chisel is cape chisel you need to remember it both the terms cross cut or cape chisel as you can see in the diagram the cutting edge is narrow all right so that means if i need to cut some channel like structure some narrow channel like channel like means some groove okay so i've got so this type of structure we have got a metal piece and I want to cut the metal piece like this. I need to have this type of slot, a groove. So in that case, we can use the cape chisel. This chisel are also used to remove the head of the rounded rivet. So we have got a drill hole and we have installed the rivet. Now the first thing, now this rivet head, it could be, you know, this type of shape, it could be this type of shape, anything. So if it is round in shape, and if I need to remove this rivet, the first thing, because we have seen that we can, to remove the rivet, the type of punch we need is, what punch? Drip punch, right? But where can we use the drip punch? So prior to use the drip punch, the first thing I need to do is cut this or chip this off. Head. So to chip off or to cut this round head ribbon, prior to use the drip punch, if I need to remove the rivet from the rivet hole, and what rivet? Rounded rivet. So before we drive out the rivet using the punch, we need to ensure that the head is chipped off. To chip off this rivet head, we are using cape chisel. So during a normal repair work, normal maintenance work, you find that some of the rivet uh, are loose and we need to remove it replace it with a new one so while doing so to remove the rivet the first thing we need to do is remove the head if it is a rounded rivet removing of this head is done using cape chisel or cross cut chisel next is diamond point chisel they are used to cut corners small 
oil groups and for rectifying an incorrect start when drilling so what exactly oil groove is in certain places we need to do lubrication right now when we do lubrication let's say the lubrication is done using oil so we must have some passage for the oil to flow so in order to have some passage for the oil to flow that means what i require is some sort of a drain isn't it so cutting of this narrow drain is done so that is your, the oil groove and that is being done by the use of diamond cut chisel in order to cut corners and for rectifying incorrect start incorrect start you drill the hole sorry you are required to drill a hole and prior to doing this as we know we need to do the indentation and that is being done by the use of what punch center punch now if you fail to do the drilling properly then if i need to rectify it that is done by the use of diamond point chisel okay so rectify any incorrect start during your drilling operation that is done by the use of diamond point chisel i need to drill a hole here but it so happened that you accidentally drill the hole like this okay you were supposed to drill here but you accidentally drill like this so you are required to rectify this portion isn't it so what you can do is take the diamond point punch and remove this portion right yes or no now the drill can be set again into this position correct and that is the purpose of the diamond point chisel any doubt so far no <laughs> the shape if you look at the shape you know flat means that if you look at the shape it is flat slightly convex but more or less flat if you look at the cross cut the shape if you look at the diamond point that means the shape half round round is this half round is this so half round chisel sorry uh yes chisel so what is the purpose of the half round chisel so these are again general purpose used for making grooves which where the groove can suitably be cut only using half round a normal chisel you cannot use then we'll, we are going to use the half round chisel to cut the groove bottom out and they are also suitable for rectifying any incorrect start similar to the purpose of the diamond point okay any doubt when selecting a chisel for the specific task we need to consider the metal we need to consider the type of work you are doing and you also need to consider the metal in which you are doing the work because all this will contribute to the correct selection of the or the correct type of the uh, chisel that you need to use so all these factors you need to keep in mind while you select the exact type of chisel what work you are doing on what material you are doing so all these factors you need to keep in mind what angle 
of the chisel we want to use that depends exactly on the hardness of the material similar to what we have seen in case of the center punch for softer material we are using large angle for hard material we are using a narrow angle so, so the same principle will follow for different degree of hardness we can have different angle again in case of chisel okay in this case for soft metal it may be assumed that the softer metal the more acute acute should be the cutting angle so in case of hard steel the point angle is 70 degree inclination angle is 40 degree in case of mild steel the point angle is 60 degree and the inclination angle is 39 degree sorry 35 degree whereas in case of soft metal the point angle is 40 uh, degree whereas the inclination angle is 30 degree so even though questions are not asked on this but you need to have some idea and try to remember if you can okay mainly the inclination angle so for soft metal we are using shallower angle okay now <coughs> shallower angle and large angle Shallower angle and large angle. It says that in case of soft metal, we use shallower angle in case of hard metal. We use large angle. Why well, we cannot use shallow angle in case of hard metal? If we use shallow angle in case of hard metal, with the hard metal being brittle and with this angle being shallow that means somehow we are reducing the area even more that means the pressure will be more with the hard metal with the high pressure acting the metal can break down okay because the pressure will get higher the lesser the angle the area will get reduced area getting reduced because unit pressure is equal to force per unit area with the area getting reduced the pressure will be higher and with the high pressure with the hard metal because the pressure is high that implies that the force is high as well and if, the, if very high force is being applied to hard metal in that case with the metal being hard that means it is more brittle and the force it cannot withstand so it will just break down okay any doubt so far? The cutting edge must be kept cool during grinding. If we need to grind, if the angle, sorry, if the degree of sharpness, because it's a cutting, uh, it is used to cut metal, so quite naturally it will be sharp. But with time, it might get blunt, so we need to sharp it again. And the sharpening is done by the use of grinding. If you are grinding it, so it will generate heat. And if it generates heat, that means it is some sort of a heat treatment. We need to cool it off. And so it is very essential that while you do the sharpening using grinding machine, you need to cool it off. And that is being done by the use of water. So you need to remember it. So, the, it is essential that you frequently need to immerse the chisel while we are grinding it to sharpen the edge. We need to immerse that in water. What cooling fluid you are using? Water. Remember this. Because we can have different types of cooling, uh, 
liquid sometimes we can use some type of oil sometimes we can use kerosene as well so you need to remember what exact type of cooling oil are we going to use in case of chisel so we are using plain water why is it essential to use this will prevent the temper being drawn into the metal because whenever we are heating anything we are making it softer in order to bring back the degree of toughness we require some cooling okay any doubt so far so what we have seen a, a brief recap of what we have studied so far in regards to chisel what is the purpose of the chisel to remove metal to cut metal depending on in what place you are using and how you are going to cut the metal we can have different type of chisel for all general purpose use we will be using the flat chisel then we also got something called the cross point chisel or cap chisel then we have got something called the diamond point chisel and then we have got something called the half round chisel so what exactly this half round cap chisel all this exactly means it means the shape of the cutting edge so we have one part to be the cutting edge and the other part where we are applying the hollow the force using the hammer while we are hammering the other end it is possible that the striking end can get damaged similar to the punch and it can cause injury as well so in order to get rid of this we frequently need to file or grind to remove this burr so flat even though it is we call it flat but it is not perfectly flat it is slightly convex for all general purpose work to cut metal piece to cut sheet metal we all use the flat chisel what is the purpose of the uh, after flat comes what the the cross cut chisel so what is the purpose of the cross cut chisel huh what is the purpose of cross cut chisel in narrow places to cut grooves and also to remove the rivet what specific type of rivet rounded rivet with the rounded rivet what type of uh, to remove the rivet what type of punch we need to use drift drift punch hollow punch only for thin sheet metal in order to remove bolt and stud for cutting oil grooves what type of cheese uh, chisel are going to use we will be using the diamond point chisel in order to uh, rectify any incorrect drilling what type of punch can we use we can use either half round or we can use the diamond point half round uh, chisel are also used for general purpose so you need to remove this what are the uh, type of chisel that we that we are using for general purpose work either you are using the flat or the half round what type of chisel are we need to use to cut grooves either we'll be using the cross cut or we'll be using the diamond point what type of chisel are we going to use if we need to rectify any incorrect drilling procedure either we are going 
to use the diamond cut or we are using the half round okay what are the factors we need to keep in mind while we select the exact type of chisel we need to consider the type of metal we are using what type of work we are doing so depending on the nature of work depending on the type of material where we are using this chisel we will select the exact type of chisel how it looks like if we look from from the top the shape is hexagonal the striking end is soft and the cutting end is hard what it is made up of either high carbon steel or nickel steel okay any doubt so these are the things we need to remember and also the angle <coughs> the next topic is bench wise so in the previous class where when we went to the uh, workshop we have seen bench wise isn't it yeah so what is bench wise wise is used the term is used for any type of holding device now either you can hold this holding device with your hand or you can use this holding device and fix it with some workbench so if you fix it with some workbench we call that as bench wise and if you are holding with your hand that is hand wise okay so initially we'll try to look into bench wise so it is used to grip the material in which we are doing some work because if i need to hold something with your hand there is you no know, i won't be able to, uh, to apply enough pressure or load because i am limited isn't it my strength is limited your strength is limited it's all here uh, <coughs> so we require something which can firmly hold and not slip so that we can you know use both our hand and do work whatever work we are uh, we need to do on the metal piece so in order to hold the metal piece firmly to grip it properly so that it does not slip off while you are doing the work we require the use of the bench wise now i because i need to hold material of different shape and sizes that means the gripping portion need to be adjustable if i need to hold this small object so the the jaw which will hold it should be up to this the uh, length or diameter and if i need something of like this to hold in that case the shape should be different so that means this jaw need to be movable yes or no depending on the material we need to hold either we need to decrease or we need to increase so it has got this detachable steel jaws which are adjustable so in order to move the steel jaw in and out we require some screw action isn't it so if you try to look at the thread of this screw there are two type of thread you will find we won't be looking in detail ab about the type of thread so this we are going to look later whenever we will study about the different threads and also these are part of the material and hardware so for the time being you remember that we can have two different type of threads either square thread or buttress thread 
okay the entire process must be easy and quick isn't it we don't want the whole process to be time consuming so it must have this quick release mechanism and in order to allow the jaw to move inside or outside as it has got some screw mechanism and the screw is either buttress or square type and in order to move it go inside or move out we require some lever so if i am turning this lever either it is going inside or if i am turning in the opposite direction it is moving outside so it must have a lever mechanism as well so these jaws as it is adjustable type so it can slide either open or it can close so open and close until we achieve the correct position the lever that we are moving disengage the half nut from the thread to perform this sliding action and it is driven back into engagement by some spring action how they are identified by the length of their jaw so you need to remember how the steel vise are identified by the length of their jaws whenever you are fitting this bench vise to the workbench we need to consider the height factor as well so definitely if the workbench is here and if you need to move like this and do the work so quite natural not a very healthy option isn't it you won't feel comfortable correct if it is too tall and if you need to climb like this and do again not a suitable option so the height we need to consider yeah what height you are going to fix the bench so what is a a common way of finding the appropriate height it should be level with the technician's elbow okay when standing adjacent to the vice the vice must be secured firmly to the workbench also very essential it should be kept clean it should be lubricated the jaws must not over tighten whenever you are closing in the jaws it must not over tighten because you are holding this work piece between these two jaw and if you are tightening it over tightening it the force can damage the jaw itself so uh, sorry can damage the work itself so you must not over tighten it or else the work piece itself can get damaged or distorted now these are made of of cast iron and let's say we are holding something which is made of aluminium so the quite natural this cast iron with the when whenever you are holding this uh, aluminium work piece against the jaws with the force being applied this work piece itself can get damaged isn't it so if we are holding something which is soft like aluminium or magnesium we need to protect it additionally and for that so to protect the soft material from hardened serrated serration means this is serration okay this is flat this is flat right if instead of this if it has got like this type of structure that is serration so you know sometimes in order to provide better grip we require this serration to protect uh, to have a better gripping capability so this jaws are hard 
They are suited for better gripping. So, this can damage the soft uh, material. So, what we can have is, if these are the jaws, let's say this is the fixed jaw, this is the fixed part, and this is the movable part where I can move this part. I can put some aluminium cover like this, isn't it? And then fix like this. And then whatever material we need to hold, soft material, we can have in between these two jaws. So the force, the very no, large force from the jaws is not damaging because it is being shielded by this aluminium clamp. Okay. Other holding device such as V blocks made of wood or any tubular items we can manufacture it locally in our workshop. If you look at you will find we have got this aluminium. Okay. So this is the thread. As you can look into the in, the in the diagram, this thread either it can be uh, the square thread or it can be buttress thread. You need to remember it. What type of thread we find in the bench wise? How can we prevent the soft metal from getting damaged because of this force being applied by the jaws? What or how the turning motion or the movement of this movable job? happens by this tightening handle lever what should be the ideal height elbow height how they are identified by the length of their jaws why the jaws are serrated for proper or better gripping Okay. Next is hand wise. As I told you before, if it is not being attached to the workbench, but instead you are holding it with your hand, hand wise. How they are identified by its overall length. Remember how the hand wise are identified are classified in terms of their overall length. Why they use specifically splicing cables? Cable splicing, you know the control cable. We have got the control wheel, then the main control elevator radar, they are being attached by the cable. Now sometimes the cable can snap off, break down and then we need to splice it. So that while we are doing the splicing of the cable, that is you need to hold it and that is being done by the use of the hand vise. Or holding any small object that are to be shaped or drilled, any small now you have got this small thing, I need to drill it. So I am holding it with a hand vise and then drilling it. So in order to move these two uh, jaws and hold it or lock it and to move these jaws, we got the wing nut. So this is the wing nut. Okay. What it is made up of? Mild steel. Some vice clamp can also be used when these vices when working with the soft material. Any doubt? So what are the things we need to keep in mind if we recall we have got two different type of vices bench vice and hand vice what are the things we need to keep in mind the height while working what we need to keep in mind that we should not apply too much of force because if we are applying too much of force if you are over tightening it it can damage the material 
what we, which we are working. What other thing we need to keep in mind if the material that you are working or holding is soft, the serrated edge of the jaw can damage it and we need to protect that and require some sort of a protecting device. This protecting device can be procured manually, uh, sorry, locally or it can come with the manufacturer as well. While working with the bench wise, we need to keep in mind that this bench wise is hold or it is secured properly to the bench. Okay. Now if it is not securing, if it is not being secured properly and you are working something being fixed or attached to the bench wise and the bench wise itself is not secured enough, in that case your work won't be properly, isn't it? Because it will be vibrating and all. Correct? How they are identified? By the jaw length. One of the jaw will be fixed and the other will be movable. What type of threads we are having? Square thread or buttress thread? What is the use of bench wise? Sorry, uh, the use of hand wise? If you are doing small work and we need to hold some small work piece, in that case we are using the hand wise. Whereas specific application of uh, hand wise for splicing cables. What type of nut is there? You will find in the bench uh, hand wise wing nut. What it is made up of? Mild steel. How it is classified in terms of their overall length? Okay, and that's all you need to remember. The next topic we'll be looking into is hexo. Hexo, probably all of you have seen, isn't it? Yes or no? So it's a cutting tool. Simple. It is a metal cutting tool. So they are used for parting off or cutting metal to the approximate size. They are primarily designed to cut metal, but may be used for other material as well. We can use that for wood as well. The frame is made up of mild steel with a suitable handle. We can have different type of handle, a straight, angle, different type of handle, pistol grip. <coughs> and the blade is replaceable. And the blade is made up of either alloy steel or high carbon steel. The blade can have different number of tools it can have around 24 to 32 teeth per inch and if you are using 24 to 32 teeth per inch that type of blade we are mainly using for cutting thin metal piece thin material and a coarser blade fine and coarser means if the number of teeth are more if the number of teeth per inch is more, that is fine. If number of teeth per inch is less, coarse. We are using coarser for thicker material. If the material is thick, we use coarse. If the material is thin, we use fine. Coarser can have 14 to 18 uh, teeth per inch. Whenever you are cutting any metal piece, always ensure that at least two teeth are always in contact with the metal piece. At all time, at least two teeth must be cutting. Whenever we need to fix the hexo blade to the hexo frame the teeth must be away from the handle 
always remember the cutting action happens in the forward stroke so the pressure must always be applied in the forward stroke and relieved in the return stroke so you are not required to apply any pressure do not apply any pressure in the return stroke because the cutting takes place in the forward stroke not in the reverse stroke unlike a normal hexo the carpenter use the normal hexo to cut the wood in that case it is opposite okay a normal saw wood saw you apply pressure in the backward stroke in case of a hexo you apply pressure in the forward stroke a hexo cut in the forward stroke a normal wood saw in the reverse stroke ensure that we are using the full length of the blade while cutting not like you know cut up only up like this ensure full length not like this full length this would prolong the life of the blade and it also reduces the chance of the jamming saw blades are given an alternate set during manufacture so you can see here one blade pointing this and the other bit uh, pointing in the other direction what is, why is it essential why it is being shaped this way it is shaped this way because in that case whenever we are cutting it with one teeth moving this side and the other teeth pointing in the other direction that means if you if if i have a blade with this type of cutting arrangement in that case the slope that we will get will be wider isn't it so if the slot is wider so it will be difficult is easier to remove it okay so that means this would prevent the blade from jamming the blade won't jam okay so we try to again recall and revise what we have seen so far what thing you need to keep in mind the first and foremost thing is what is the purpose of hexo it is used to cut any metal piece or sometimes it can be used for other material as well but more specifically in in aviation we are concerned with the metal cutting we can have different number of teeth per inch if we have got no more number of teeth per inch that is your fine hexo less number of teeth per inch that is coarser coarser we are using for soft and fine we are using for hard metal thin metal okay so for so, uh, fine it is 24 to 32 teeth per inch for soft it is 14 to 18 teeth per inch always remember whenever you are cutting apply pressure in the forward direction and release in the reverse direction at least two teeth must always be in contact while you are cutting it and this is essential in order to prevent any jamming the teeth are always set at one this side and the other in this direction why this is done this is done in order to have a wider <coughs> cutting why is it essential because if we do this in that case the <coughs> possibility of damage because of jamming can be minimized the frame is made up of mild steel the blade made up of either carbon steel or any type of alloy steel the handle 
can have normal straight handle different type of handles are there it depends on what type of uh, handle we prefer it depends on the type of work we're doing the tightening and loosening is done by the use of wing nut so these are the things we need to keep in mind okay any doubt so far